The Nexus 7 is a great little tablet from Google, but it's a little bit laggy after the Android 4.2 update. I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now, and this is how you can eliminate some of that lag and extend your battery life at the same time with the Franco Kernel. This is my Nexus 7, and as you can tell up here by my battery status indicator, I've been using this guy a lot. Mainly streaming some Netflix videos. If you listened to our podcast a few days ago, that's because I've been trying to catch up on Caprica. No spoiler alerts, please. I'm still on like episode 5 or 6, so getting through it. Now, Netflix is a unique app. It uses not only your screen to display what you're watching, but it also uses your network connection to stream that information in. In short, it's very, very battery and resource intensive. So I had to do something with this to get me better battery life. I also came across something somewhat interesting. Things are significantly more fluid. Stuff opens up quicker. It's just all around faster. And a lot of the lag that people have been complaining about with the, uh, the Nexus 7 Android 4.2 update is gone when I'm running this Franco kernel. It's wonderful. So let me get into that just a little bit. This is Cyanogen Mod 10.1 M1. That means it is a rooted device. It is running a custom wrong. It still has a lot of that same lag that people complain about. But Franco Kernel Updater, this is the app. It's available in the App Store and it costs a few bucks. This lets you do a bunch of things. First of all, it lets you go out and update your kernel. And it says here that my installed version is 42 and the latest stable version is R42, so I'm doing that. The first time you run the app, you'll want to tap on this to download the latest stable kernel. That'll download it, install it, you'll have to reboot for the changes to take effect. Once you do that, things are going to be a lot faster, a lot smoother, and you'll have better battery life. Like I said, that up there, that's hours and hours and hours longer than what I'd normally get, so keep that in mind. Once that's installed, that's all you got to do. However, if you want to go in and do more, you can. You can come in here and mess with frequencies and voltages. It does require super user permission, which of course requires root. You can change your maximum frequency up to, in this case, 1300 megahertz. That's 1.3 gig, or all the way down to 100 megahertz. I've kind of capped that down at 400. The governor is interactive. That's the one that it's selected by default. And then you can go in and mess around with the GPU. I haven't done any of that, and in all honesty, other than doing those couple things, I haven't messed with any settings in here other than setting those CPU settings at boot. You can just install this and let it run, and it's very, very nice. Next, let's look at custom kernel settings. We'll open that up. Again, granted super user permissions. You can change your I.O. scheduler, I.O. turning, turn on uh, F-Sync. I have left this mainly alone. One thing that I did do is I've noticed that with this new router I'm using, Wi-Fi is a little bit spotty, so I ticked that checkbox right there to, uh, to basically help out. You enable this option, I'll read it for you, to boost the Wi-Fi signal at some battery cost. It's also helpful when your screen is off. So I've done that, and since then I haven't had any more Wi-Fi problems. You can also enable or disable the Tegra screen dimmer. This goes through and it saves a lot of battery life when you're watching video by smoothing out the video, taking out some of the more bright scenes and making it more, uh, more universal. If you don't like that, if you think it causes some weirdness in your video, just uncheck that and it's good to go. It comes unchecked. I went ahead and checked it because honestly, I haven't noticed all that much. I also changed my TCP congestion avoidance algorithm over here to Vegas. I've seen that before. I don't know exactly what it does, but I like Vegas, so I put that in there. If you want to, you can change your kernel boot animation to be the, uh, the Franco kernel boot. I like the Cyanogen mod one, so I will leave that off. And really, that's all you've got to do. There are other things you can do in here. You can set power modes. You can back up and restore your kernel settings. It's really, really nice. And here's one of the coolest things. It's your monitor. So you can see exactly what this is doing. Right now you can see that I'm running at 1300 megahertz down to 300 up to 700. I can see my voltages not being responded to. And then if you look down here, this shows you, I, this is a quad core device. My first two cores are online and working and then the next two are not. And then in fact, core number one just offline because I don't need it. There's not enough stuff going on right now for me to use all three of the, uh, all four of the cores, so it's just using 
that one. So really kind of cool what you can do. The app is called Franco Kernel Updater. It is available not for every device in the, uh, the Google Play Store. If it's not available for your device, it either won't show up or won't let you download it. If you do download it and can't do stuff with it, it's probably because you're not rooted. You do need root for that. Overall, very impressed. Reduces lag significantly, increases battery life significantly, lets you do a whole bunch of cool stuff. Very quick, very easy. Install it, run it, you'll love it. If you liked what you saw here, why not share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus? Give the video a thumbs up. For Pocket Now, showing off Franco Kernel, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.